Hey guys, welcome to Technability, your source for no-nonsense tech. My name is Berge, and what we have over here is a review that I've been waiting to do for quite a while, and thanks to our senior editor, John Salaby, we were able to get this phone, and that would be the CM11 OnePlus One. All right, we're going to go ahead and do an unboxing here. Just to let you guys know, we've already opened this device. We've had ample time to play with it. And again, I do want to thank John Salaby, Technability Senior Editor, for getting this device, because we've been anticipating it, and you know, finally we got it. So we're going to go ahead and take a look here. First thing first, let's go and show you guys what's actually in the box. So you can see the charger right here. This is the box the charger comes in. Okay. This would be the actual charger. I wanted to show this to you guys because look how thick this cable is. Now given that it's this thick, this thing charges super fast. So it's a really good charger. I'm glad that they gave us something like this because it's different, it's unique, and it's showing you guys that CM is in it to win it. Now go into the actual box of the device, another aspect of the device that's unique. You can see the back, you have all the information. This is a 64 gigabyte sandbox black model. Okay, we'll get into all the specs in a second, but I want to go ahead, go ahead and show you guys the box. It's really sleek, feels really nice, it's got like a matte-like finish. You can see you pull this little red string right here, and you actually open it up. And then when we open up the box, voila, there's the device. So let's go ahead and take this plastic off. Alright, we got the plastic stuck on, let's go ahead and take that off. And there's the actual one plus one. Okay. Let's go ahead and see what's behind the box. Here you can see you got the uh, again the cables and then the SIM card remover. And this does take nano SIM, FY, in case you guys are wondering. All right, we're gonna go ahead and put the box aside now and take a look at the actual phone. All right, so again, this is the One Plus One. This is running Cyanogen mod, so this is CM's phone. It's basically like a Nexus, and if you look at it from the front, it does almost look like a Nexus 5, so you can easily be fooled into thinking this is a Nexus 5, but nope, it's a One Plus One. Going through the spec rundown, you have a beautiful 5.5 inch 1080p display, rendering 401 pixels per inch. You can see that the screen does protrude out a little bit from the frame, which gives it that unique feel and look. You do have the capacitive buttons below here, which you could turn on, as well as the on-screen navigation buttons. It's a 2.5 gigahertz Snapdragon 801 processor, Adreno 330 GPU, comes in 16 and 64 gigabyte internal storage, no external SD card, and three gigabytes of RAM. Now on the back, you can see, it's custom, you can customize the back. Uh, this has a matte finish. It's uh, a 13 megapixel camera with dual LED flash. You got the front facing camera, which is five megapixels, which is actually really pretty cool that you have a five megapixel front facing camera, all of the HTC M8. Uh, it's 8.9 millimeters in thickness, very lightweight. You got a 3100 milliamp battery in this beast, so you're gonna get really, really good battery life with this thing. Uh, so it, overall, in terms of just specs, this is a high-end phone, there's no doubt about it. CM has created, this is their flagship right here, guys. The OnePlus One is CyanogenMod's flagship. And just going around the device, uh, it's absolutely phenomenal in terms of its build. I am really impressed with the build of this phone. I can't say that for a lot of phones, uh, but this right here is very impressive. It feels like an expensive phone, and considering the fact that it's $349, of course, with an invite, uh, this thing is worth it. I mean, pound for pound, I don't think you could get a better phone for that price pound for pound. Now, this will be released to the public very soon, but as of right now, the 64 gigabytes is 349 and the 16 is 299 So that is, that is a great deal. I mean, the Nexus, Google's phone, has some competition here with CM's phone, so they're going to be battling it out for the best of stock Android. Now going and looking at the actual software of the phone. So that, there's the hardware. You, of course, let me just go through the sides here. You got the nano SIM tray right here. Up top you have the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. Over here you have the power button. And you can see on the bottom you have the dual speakers. Yes, dual speakers with micro USB charging port. Of course, you have the volume rockers right here as well. All right, let's go ahead and look at the actual software. Now you can see the software is uh, CM, it's Cyanogen Mod. It looks stock, right? For the most part, it looks like stock Android, but it's actually Cyanogen Mod. And one thing I like about this screen, before I get into anything, very little bezel. So if you were to put, let's say, a black background, it'll almost look like the entire front is just screen. And you can disable these navigation buttons below and use the actual buttons that you have here on the bottom. If I could just zoom in on that, which I probably can't, but uh, you could see them there. They're actually there. You have the same buttons that are up here, right down below so you get more screen real estate essentially so going through the software again it is cyanogen so it's CM uh, 
11, I believe, which is running on this, with Android 4.4.4. So you have the latest and greatest in terms of software. It doesn't get it doesn't get better than this, guys, in terms of Android. I, I'm going to go ahead and put a black background because I want to show you guys what it looks like. I think that looks so nice. I mean, look at that, guys. Great viewing angles. It does not distort uh, when you view it in different angles. It's It's got a great Lux rating. Lux rating meaning what it looks like in direct sunlight. It's absolutely phenomenal in terms of the color saturation. It, it almost looks AMOLED-esque. And, and this, you know, it's not even, I think it's a 50% brightness or maybe 60% brightness, just about. So this thing is super bright. And we're fans of the screen screen here on the OnePlus One. They really did a, a really good job here uh, basically customizing the screen, which again, you can customize the screen as well, the saturation. So CM gives you the ability to, to customize the saturation, the tint, the hue, uh, and really you don't even need to root the device. It's like that out of the box. So nonetheless, uh, in terms of software, this is Cyanogen Mod. We've done a lot of reviews here on Technability's channel in relation to Cyanogen because we are big fans of this system. It was a custom ROM at one time. We touted it as the best custom ROM on the market. We still do to a certain extent, but now you can see it's reached that mainstream to where it isn't just a custom ROM anymore, but it's an actual platform here on an actual phone. So going through the software, let me go through the settings before I go through anything else because I just want to show you guys exactly how how many customizations this device has. So you can see the settings, very easy to use, very simplistic. Of course up top you have the wireless and network settings and then you have the personalization and this is where it gets fun guys going to the home options of course you can change the launchers so you can have a variety of different launchers going to lock screen you can see that you have screen security button actions custom lock screen which is actually the lock screen that comes with out of the box which is this gorgeous thing right here now you basically slide down you can see it says never settle and it unlocks the device. So you got clock widget options, camera widget options. Going to themes, you have a variety of different themes packs. You can download many more in the Play Store. Some are free, some cost money, but you could see just going through these. Aside from just the theme packs, Ideal Theme, Holo, and Hexo, you got styles. So you could change the styles. You could change the icons. You can download various different icon packs as well. You have a variety of different fonts, a multitude of different wallpapers, which personally I'm not too big big of a fan or crazy about CM's wallpapers, but you can always download third-party wallpapers. You can see them right here, the Never Settle one, etc., etc. Okay, you have the boot animations, which you can even change the boot animations, guys. Uh, sound packs as well, so you can see you have a variety of different sound packs, and if you just click on Get More, you can actually download more directly through the Play Store. And of course, uh, going back to Status Bar, you have Status Bar options, and this was one of my favorite features in relation to CM before, and still is today. You have a variety of different stat strat status bar features, status uh, signal status style, so you can either do an icon text or you can hide it all together. Brightness control, if you want brightness control up there. Show notification count, of course, double tap to sleep. Um, you have a variety of different notification drawer options as well. You can see it says auto close behavior, quick settings panel, which is essentially this right here. This is the quick settings. You can access it by either swiping down from the right. You can access the regular notification by swiping down to the left or simply using two fingers. You can access that uh, in that, that way as well. So you can see the tiles and layouts, sound modes, scream timeout modes, dynamic tiles which you can remove or add. Alright, going back here, I'm going back again. You have gestures as well now which is really cool. So let's say, um, alright, let's say I want to access the camera and my phone's locked. I just simply draw a circle and I've now accessed my camera and if I go home you can see it takes me right to my home screen because I don't have a lock screen set up. But if you had a lock screen set up, it would take you to your lock screen. Like let's say you had a password or whatnot. So they've added gestures and they've, they've, told, they've told us that they're going to go ahead and actually add more gestures here with future updates. So look out for that, guys. You have flashlight by drawing a V and you have music as well. So quite... Uh, quite interesting and I'm a big fan of gestures uh, period. I think gestures on phones is the future because eventually you're not going to have any buttons. You're just everything's going to be gesture based. So you can see the sound options of course which is stock Android sound options, displaying lights, the buttons you can you know adjust the buttons as well. The home button, the menu buttons, these buttons down here you can remove them all together if you want. You see where it says buttons and layouts you can adjust that. The power menu as well so that would be when you actually try to let's see hold the power button you can adjust this menu here as well so going back um, of course you have battery storage apps and again this is the 64 gigabyte model profile and all the other settings that you get with stock android so um, you know it's 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 really it's really something that 
if you're if you're big on customizations or even if you're not big on customizations it's nice having this many of them i mean i i kind of miss that you know because i've been using an htc one as my android phone the m8 and it's on HTC Sense, and although they have a good amount of customizations, uh, I haven't really had a, a, a CM system on my phone for a, a little bit of time, so I do miss this amount of customizations. You can see performance options here because this phone is rooted. Uh, you can uh, overclock and underclock the processor and whatnot. So it's really easy to root this phone as well, guys. It's meant to be rooted, really. It's meant for uh, development in a multitude of different ways. Again, I think its main competitor would be the Nexus phone. You can see here it's on 4.4.4. Okay. And if you're pulling this box, if you're pulling this phone out of the box and you want to enable developer options, just click, keep clicking on build number. You develop, uh, uh, you'd enable developer options, and go in here to signage and modern version. You get this as well. See CM. Okay. So, and and just to emphasize on this, guys, and getting out of the settings here, just to emphasize on this, this phone is blazing fast. Okay, I don't say that about every phone. Maybe these days I do because they're so powerful nowadays. I mean, they really, they really are all are blazing fast in their own personal way. But just you could see, I'm opening and closing out of apps, and this thing has not one second of lag, not one second of stutter. It doesn't have to think about what I'm doing. It's just opening it. I want to go to the app drawer. I want to open my email. I want to go home. Go back to the app drawer. Open Muse. Go back. Open Play Movies, Rewards, Screencast, Games. Let's go ahead and just open a quick game while I'm doing that. And then I want to multitask and close out of all of them. I can simply swipe them away one by one, or I could just close them all at once. I mean, that was fast, wasn't it, guys? It was like 30 seconds of boom, 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 boom. Uh, of course, you also have the ability to long press on the home screen. You can change the wallpapers, themes as well, directly from there. Uh, you also have the ability to change the wallpaper, uh, the widget. You also have the ability of adding widgets. You can see the multitude of widgets that it comes with. Of course, you can also download more widgets from the Play Store. Uh, so a ton of widgets as well. Again, going back to the home screen, creating folders very easy, right? Just drag an icon into another icon. Get these very simplistic looking folders, which is exactly how I like it. Simplistic and minimal. And Android really was the innovator of simplistic and minimal. And then, of course, Windows Phone came around. And now iOS, uh, with iOS 7 and 8, has gone with that minimal look. So let's go ahead and take a look at some of the apps that it comes with. Uh, it really doesn't come with much. I mean, it's stock Android, so you're not going to get bloatware out of the box. And this is on T-Mobile's LTE network. So it is LTE compatible. Okay. So in case you guys are wondering, this is LTE compatible. It's on T-Mobile's LTE network. Uh, let's go ahead and do some benchmarks here. Do we have Quadrant installed? Let's go ahead and install Quadrant in N22. Okay, so go in here to the Play Store. We'll do Quadrant. Still one of my favorite benchmark apps. And we'll do N22 and we'll do speed tests just to show you guys what the data speeds are. Oh, there's N22. Oh, N22 is already installed. Okay, so speed test. Alright, so while those are installing, you can see how fast that installed it. I mean, that was literally immediate. Okay, and again, going back and looking at the stock Google Apps, you can see it comes with all the stock Google Apps. Okay, Google, tell me the weather. It's 78 degrees and clear in Los Angeles. Okay, Google, who is the 12th President of the United States? Zachary Taylor was the 12th president of the United States. Okay, Google. Okay, Google. Open Chrome. All right, opening Google Chrome. Opening app. Google Now, easily the best voice to text, voice dictation system on the on the internet or on phones on the internet. Uh, you could see here Google Chrome with the tabs. All right, they kind of added their own little flavor to the theme, which is cool. You can swipe them away. Web browsing is really fast, really fluid, really smooth. Um, no exceptions here with Google Chrome. It's definitely a good browser. Uh, of course, depending on your network, you're going to load web, web pages faster. So you can see me pinch zooming here on the website and just going ahead and looking at the text. It's very crisp. So you got super crisp text here. Um, because it is a 1080p display with 401 pixels per inch, so you would expect nothing less. And I love this about Android. Look, I just want to scroll all the way down to the bottom. Just one hard scroll. I don't have to keep doing this, you know? So that's a cool little thing there that's always been prevalent on Android. All right, let's go ahead and look at these um, benchmark apps that I downloaded here. So first we'll do a quick speed test. We got 4-bar LTE here on T-Mobile, so let's check this out here. All right.
Probably pretty good speeds for four, for four bar LTE. Factory unlocked phone. So we got about 16 down, give or take about 12 up. All right, those are good speeds. Let's close out. Let's go ahead and do a quadrant. I will place the phone down here while that's happening and give you a little bit of history on Cyanogen and what they're all about. Okay, Cyanogen basically was a company at first who developed custom ROMs for the Android platform. They've been doing it for quite a while now, almost ever since the inception of Android or a little bit afterwards. Uh, they were usually or generally compatible with every phone. And the reason why people would install it to begin with was because they might have had a slow phone or a phone that wouldn't update. And you install Cyanogen and that thing would really speed it up, add a lot of new features, and of course give you the latest and greatest in Android. I remember when Gingerbread was out for Android, they had a 2.3.6 build of Cyanogen and it was like the greatest thing ever because it gave you the features and the uh, latest and greatest feature, uh, the latest and greatest in Android that you wouldn't get otherwise because the manufacturer just wouldn't update the phone. So people would go crazy about rooting it and you would get CM. And look at that, 23,000. We like those speeds. 3 gigs of RAM, Snapdragon 801 processor, we like those speeds. 23,000 is fantastic. So that's about on par with the most high-end Android phones on the market today. All right, let's go ahead and look at Antutu here. All right, so we're going to do an Antutu benchmark, and then we're going to fast-forward to the actual score. Okay, but we're just going to go ahead and get this started here. All right, we're back here with the Antutu score, and look at that. 46,650. That is impressive. And this, the, the, ever since that score, I thought the HTC One, well, I think I got about 41 or 42,000 on the M8. But that's a 46,650. That means this thing is optimized to run like a champ. And that's exactly what it's doing with a 46,650 and 22 score. And you know what? Let's go ahead and take a screenshot of that. And the screenshots, by the way, is volume down and power, in case you guys are wondering. Very easy to do. So in terms of benchmarks, this thing is killer. You see that notification that just popped up right there? You get that. If apps are done downloading, you take a screenshot, you can just simply swipe it away. Of course, it's also going to show up here on the notification bar. Uh, go into the weather app, because a lot of people seem to be interested in weather apps before I get into some other apps. Uh, if I could find the weather app. Right, you know what? Actually, before we get into weather, I do want to show you guys video quality. All right, so let's go ahead and look at some video quality here on this device. Okay. I love YouTube on an Android phone. It just runs better than any other, uh, in my opinion, it just runs better than any other platform with YouTube. Right, let's go ahead and look at the iPhone 6 review, which you guys can check out on our channel. Super fast buffering, and of course, you don't need to be on Wi-Fi to have a uh, to have high quality here. Safari. I mean, everything is just going to be fast. You can see with the multi 720p. And you have 1080p as well. You know, iOS 8. If you're not accustomed with it, you can check speaker out sound quality reviews. is really good. You, if you have recent contacts, it will show up right up here. It does have the multitasking, which you can just swipe away apps. You can swipe away two or three at a time. I'm going back here to the home screen. Of course, you have your notification panel. Your notifications will show up right here. You can reply to them, X out of them, etc. Your today's tab, and you can edit this and add. You have the sharing options as well. You can see that. Okay, and just play it. Various different widgets as well, like notification bar. Okay, so you can do that here with right, that. And then to simply close out of it, you can either go home or just simply click on the multitasking button, and voila, you're done. All right, so let's go ahead and look at the dialer here, what the dialer looks like. Nice looking dialer. Google Hangouts, of course. Nothing changed on the Google Hangouts end. I mean, nothing, nothing uh, different is what I mean. Right, let's go ahead and look at some games. Jackpot slots, Temple Run, and. Flappy Birds. Such a nice looking display. I mean, this thing has a really, really killer display. The colors are just so nice on it. No doubt about that. Look how smooth that is. Not a speck of lag. The game runs at, at really good frame rates. Uh, graphically, it's really good. This is a uh, solid phone, man. I'm just going to go home here. I'm not even going to close out of it, and I'm going to open up Temple Run. Okay. Show you guys how fast this is. We've come a long way to where these phones are running like, literally like their uh, high-end computers, if not better, in so many different ways. Let's go ahead and sh close and show tutorials, and let's just play. 
And of course this thing plays graphically intensive games really well as well. You know, Modern Warfare and uh, Soul Calibur and all those other games that you can buy in the Play Store. So there's no exception here with graphically intensive games. Those run just as well. And the frame rates on this are the best I've seen in terms of Temple Run. Just the way it runs on this device or on Android, high-end Android phones, really doesn't get any better than this, guys. This is really um, where it's at if you're into gaming. Okay. All right, so again, we're going to close out of it. We're not going to actually multitask. Let's go ahead and check out Swing Copter. Not too familiar with this game, but it doesn't seem like it's too hard to learn. Oh, it's like Flappy Birds. <laughs> All right. <laughs> okay, well, there you go, guys. <laughs> Sorry, copter. All right, we're going to close out of all that. I don't know what I just did, but okay. You can see close them one by one or just close them all out at once. Okay, you can see the gallery here. Okay, the gallery. Of course, you could pinch in on a picture. You could pinch out. You could share it. Third-party apps do sync in here. You can edit the photo as well by just clicking here and cl clicking on edit. You have a multitude of different editing options, you know, uh, filters, auto uh, enhance, looks, looks, which is the filters. You can adjust the brightness, the contrast by going to tune image. Uh, simply go to tune image here and just uh, click on the image and you can adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation, shadows, and more. Of course, again, like I said, you can always download third-party editing apps as well. Pixay Pro is one of my favorite ones. Now, speaking of gallery, let's go ahead and look at the camera here and then wrap up this review. All right, it's a really good camera, 13 megapixels. Okay, it's got dual LED flash. Front-facing camera is really solid as well. Let's go ahead and take a picture of the uh, new small large iPhone. <laughs> Oh, look at that. It almost looks like the iPhone screen is on the, uh... Well, no, that would be too small, wouldn't it? Alright, let's take a look at the actual, uh... Flash here. It's zoomed in. Bright flash. And, of course, you also have the front-facing camera. So there's a front-facing camera. 5 megapixels! So it's a really good front-facing camera as well. So we're big fans of this camera. It's got good, uh, good color saturation. It's not grainy at all. It takes really detailed pictures when you transfer them to your computer. We're fans. You've got a multitude of different options. You could do panorama. You could do video. If you just click here, you can see the various different features, size, quality. Let's say quality at 90%. Let's do quality 100%. You've got burst mode as well. So let's do burst mode 20 shots. Turn it on. Yeah, burst mode 20 shots. So, and then you can see right there it says 20. So you got burst mode on. It's really fast. You have a multitude of different features right here. So we're fans of this camera. It's a good camera. The video records in solid frame rate. I mean, the video records actually really well. Solid frame rates. We're fans of the quality of the video on this 13 megapixel camera. And going back to the images that we just took, you can see them right here. Those are the burst shots. So we took a multitude of burst shots, right? Um, there you go. Very easy to use. There's a picture we took earlier. Okay. Oops, I actually clicked on multitasking. There it is. You can see the quality is really good. Okay. So, there's the gallery, there's the camera. And everything else is pretty self explanatory with this phone, guys. Uh, it is the, uh, it's stock Android, it's Google. Uh, at its best in my opinion it's Android at its best with CM because this really shows its potential and really shows you what it's made of and what it has to offer and what it, it can do as a whole as a, as, a, as a system as a platform as a mobile platform um, really it's something that it's a phone that I think of course is, is, is overlooked by the, the popular manufacturers out there but it shouldn't be and I really emphasize that because you could just look at this device and feel it and, and hold it in your hand and it, it this is what a 5.5 inch device should be they did it well there's a little bezel it feels good in the hand it's light it's got good battery life good camera great screen fantastic software I mean there's I don't have I don't have one flaw I don't see one wrong thing with this phone it's done perfect in my opinion um, 
you know, for those who are looking for an inexpensive device where you're going to get, you know, basically everything that you're looking for in a high-end phone for an affordable price, this is it. Three forty-nine for the sixty-four gigabyte, and two ninety-nine for the sixteen gigabyte. We're going to go ahead and just compare it here next to the iPhone six, as well as the iPhone six plus, because the iPhone six plus is a five point five inch display as well. But you can see it's actually a little bit bigger. And we're also going to put the HTC M eight next to it, which is a uh, which is a five inch display. And these are all these are four phones that have solid build qualities. All right, let me go ahead and actually just put the uh, the. 8.9 millimeter plus 7.1 millimeter side by side. You can see it's not that big of a difference in terms of thickness. All right, and we're going to be doing individual comparisons with all of these phones uh, in about. We're coming soon, actually, so look out for that, guys. You can see just the back of the space gray one. You can see the back of the HTC. All right, so there it is, guys. The One Plus One, the CM phone, Cyanogen Mods flagship device. It's here or it's coming. If it's already here, if you're if you're on a a special list. If you're not, then it's coming. So look out for this phone, guys. Again, it's affordable. It works. Uh, it's unlocked, factory unlocked out of the box. So it does work with T-Mobile LTE or if you're with a prepaid carrier, for example. So look out for this phone. It's something that I think you should definitely take into consideration. Uh, it has the full package, and I, I definitely recommend this for any smartphone user in any market. I think this is a phone that you should look at. Uh, it's a phone that definitely deserves not only my praise, but the praise of the average consumer. All right, guys, this is the OnePlus One CM KitKat 4.4.4. You've been watching Technability. Again, your source for no-nonsense tech. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Also, don't forget to check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Mm -hmm.